Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Istanbul for the UEFA Europa League group stage draw. Today, we are joined by representatives from the teams that have qualified, all of whom are waiting to discover who they will be facing in this year's competition. Also, a warm welcome from my side. And Pedro, this season promises to be a quite different one for the UEFA European Club competition with the addition of a brand new tournament, the UEFA Europa Conference League. And the introduction of the Conference League means exciting new changes to the UEFA Europa League as well. There we have it, one brand new competition and a groundbreaking approach to the UEFA Europa League as well. There is a lot to look forward to in UEFA's premier club competitions return bigger and better than ever. Yes, and Pedro, of course, last season's Europa League delivered drama, excitement and thrills on a totally new scale, with Villarreal lifting the trophy for their first time ever in club history. That's right. Let's take a look back at some of the highlights from what was truly a magnificent competition.
congratulations again to Villarreal on their first major European title and to their coach, Unai Emery. What a story, wow. who has now won the Europa League in incredible four times. Amazing. It was another standout season in the UEFA Europa League football with some exceptional performances from some of the best players on the planet. But, Laura, there can only be one UEFA Europa League player of the season. And the award is voted for by the 48 UEFA Europa League clubs that featured in last season's competition, along with 55 football journalists, with three players shortlisted for the trophy. So the nominees are Edinson Cavani of Manchester United, whose six goals in the competition included the equaliser in the final itself. Bruno Fernandes, also Manchester United, who was a creative tour de force in their run to the final. And Gerard Moreno of Villarreal, who led the line for the yellow submarine, scoring seven goals in 12 appearances. And this year's trophy goes to... Gerard Moreno! Congratulations! No, muchas gracias a todos. Eh, me hubiera gustado poder estar allí para recibirlo, pero bueno, como ya todos sabéis, por el tema del COVID no es posible. Eh, me hace mucha ilusión este premio, eh, porque para nosotros la temporada pasada significó una temporada histórica para el club, para el Villarreal, eh, por conseguir el primer título en, en su historia, eh, el primer título europeo. Eh, por eso nos, nos hace mucha ilusión. Eh, por el premio quiero agradecérselo a todo el mundo que lo ha hecho posible, tanto a los que me han votado pues darle las gracias, al cuerpo técnico y a mis compañeros evidentemente que al final eh, han hecho posible también que yo pueda tener este reconocimiento, ¿no? evidentemente al club y a la afición también. Y, y bueno, eh, muchísimas gracias a todos, que, que lo he dicho antes pero, pero lo vuelvo a decir, ¿no? me hace muchísima ilusión recibir este premio que, que para mí es, es muy importante. Así que gracias y espero que, que vaya todo bien y nos vemos pronto. Un abrazo. Incredible season from Gerard Sharpshooter from Villarreal, our UEFA Europa League player of the season. Right, now it's almost time for us to begin the draw for the yeah. UEFA Europa League group stage. And this season's final will be played at the Ramon Sanchez Pijuan Stadium in Valencia. In Sevilla. Sevilla, because Sevilla is one of the most successful clubs in the UEFA Europa League history, having won the trophy six times. And our next guest was an important player of the winning teams from 2006 and 2007. And bringing the UEFA Europa League trophy on stage tonight, ladies and gentlemen, the final ambassador, Andres Palop. It's quite a heavy one. Oh. But he's used to winning it. <laughs> yes, yes, definitely. He has a great relationship with this trophy. Andres, great to have you here with us. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Como estas? Yeah. We have to ask you about winning this competition twice with Sevilla. Uh, such amazing memories. How proud are you to be part of not only Sevilla, Andalusian, but Spanish history with this particular tournament? Háblanos de tu orgullo de ser parte de la historia de esta competición y de uh, vivir emociones con este trofeo. Sí, para mí fue muy importante iniciar el camino del Sevilla hacia los seis títulos que, que hoy en día disponen sus vitrinas y conseguir eh, en el 2006 el primer triunfo, el primer trofeo 
y luego conseguir consecutivamente el segundo fue un auténtico orgullo. Por lo tanto, muy contento de pertenecer a Sevilla en ese momento, a Andalucía y sobre todo pues, que España tenga también un, un equipo que tenga tantos títulos en la Europa League. And the 2007 success was in a large part down to you. So what are your memories of that final? Well, uh, I'll also help translate a little bit. ¿Qué, qué, qué recuerdos tienes de la final de 2007? Sí, pues yo creo que fue mi mejor año eh, a nivel deportivo. Creo que fue el año que más disfruté. Eh, conseguí eh, tres títulos ese año a nivel local y en la Europa League. Y sobre todo, pues bueno, eh, vemos imágenes de, de los penaltis mm. en el último encuentro donde pude hacer una asistencia, donde pude eh, parar tres penaltis y sinceramente son recuerdos imborrables que llevo muy dentro del corazón. You're the final ambassador. I have to ask you about the final and the stadium where it will be played in the Ramón Sánchez Pijuán in Sevilla, a stadium you know so well. Why is it so special? ¿Qué hace el estadio de Sevilla tan especial? El ambiente. Creo que el ambiente es un ambiente extraordinario. Creo que tenemos... Eh, el aficionado, la gente en general, la ciudad, creo que es idónea para recibir a todo aficionado que vaya a ver esa final y sinceramente creo que es un estadio que está ahora mismo reconstruido y puesto en, en, como última generación para bueno, que disfruten de un gran ambiente y disfruten de un gran escenario como es el Ramón Sánchez y Juan. Thanks, gracias. Andrés. Gracias, gracias. Muchas gracias. gracias. It's great to have you here today, uh, today helping with the draw. So uh, may I ask you now to take your position at the draw table. Gracias. Thank you, Andrés Palop, final ambassador. Now it's time to introduce our special guest who will also be helping us out with the draw. And it gives me great pleasure to welcome a man who represented Villarreal with distinction for 11 years and was also a member of Spain's title-winning UEFA Euro 2008 squad. And please welcome on stage, Marcus Sinner. Hola. Hola. Marcus, welcome. Bienvenido. Great to have you here. I have to ask you about the final last year because it was such a, 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 a dramatic one, an emotional one. You're normally used to being out there on the pitch. How was it watching it as a fan and, and as someone who works with the club now? Uh, háblanos de, de, de cómo fue vivir esa final loca el año pasado uh, con Manchester United como, como aficionado y como alguien que trabaja en el club ahora. Bueno, he disfrutado muchísimo, pero también he sufrido. <laughs> eh, yo sé que en el campo se sufre mucho, tanto la parte física como mental. Pero desde fuera también eh, se sufre mental y físico. Pero yo creo que fue un año que he disfrutado al 100%, porque hemos llegado a una final, 20 penaltis, y conseguí ganar a todo un poderoso Manchester United. Para nosotros fue algo histórico. Y esperamos seguir luchando ¿no? para conseguir títulos. And Marcos, uh, you were part of the team in 2006, Villarreal team that came close of winning a European trophy. How good are your memories on that special day? Y háblanos también de, del equipo de 2006 en la Champions, que, que jugó tan bien. ¿Qué recuerdos tienes de ese equipo? Era un equipo increíble, ¿no? Fue una época donde el Villarreal debutó en Champions League. Hasta hoy seguimos siendo el máximo debutante y llegar más lejos en esta competición. Y hemos disfrutado muchísimo. La idea era ir paso a paso, no teníamos la presión, había jugadores extraordinarios. Eh, la verdad que fue una etapa muy bonita para todos nosotros. La afición del Villarreal está muy orgullosa de, de toda esta trayectoria, ¿no? lo mm. que viene haciendo el Villarreal. La verdad que me siento un privilegiado de poder hacer parte de esa gran institución que es el Villarreal. Muy bien. Marcos, gracias. Thank you. Also gracias. great to have you here today helping with the draw. So please take your position at the draw okay. table. Thank you so much. All right. We're counting down. We're ready to begin the draw. And so I'd like to welcome on stage UEFA Deputy General Secretary Giorgio Marchetti and Michael Hesselschwert, UEFA Head of Club Competitions.
Thank you, Laura. Thank you, Pedro. Good afternoon from Istanbul, ladies and gentlemen, where we are keen to kick off another thrilling UEFA Europa League season. First of all, let me congratulate the teams that uh, made it uh, to the group stage, and in particular, those who feature in the competition for the very first time. The UEFA Europa League has a new format uh, from this season with 32 teams in the group stage instead of uh, the previous 48, as well as an additional knockout round before the round of 16. We have no doubts that uh, these formats will further enhance the level and quality and uh, new excitement will be added for the fans of this competition throughout the entire season. We are very much uh, looking forward to another brilliant chapter of uh, European club football whose final act could not have a more appropriate venue as the Ramon Sanchez Pijuan Stadium is the home to Sevilla FC, the club which has such a love affair with this competition that they have won a record six times. Best of luck and a great European campaign to all clubs involved in today's draw. Indeed, Giorgio, thank you very much. Let's take a look at the technical procedure for this season's UEFA Europa League draw. The 32 teams have been allocated to four pots in accordance with the seeding principles based on the UEFA club coefficients. Pot 1 will comprise the top eight clubs in the club coefficient rankings, Pot 2 the following eight clubs in the rankings, and so on for Pots 3 and 4. For TV coverage reasons, clubs from the same association are paired in order to split their kickoff times, that is, one early and one late. For this reason, the eight groups will be distinguished by colours. Groups A to D will be red, and groups E to H will be blue. When a paired club is drawn, for example into a red group, A to D, the other paired club, once it has been drawn, will automatically be assigned to one of the four blue groups, E to H. In addition, pairing principles will also be applied between UEL and UECL. Therefore, in the case of associations with one representative in the UEFA Europa League group stage and one representative in the UEFA Europa Conference League group stage, these clubs will also be paired so that their matches kick off at different times. In the case of associations with one representative in the UEFA Europa League group stage and three representatives in the UEFA Europa Conference League group stage, the UEFA Europa League club will be paired with the unpaired club in the UEFA Europa Conference League group stage. In the case of associations with three representatives in the UEFA Europa League group stage and one representative in the UEFA Europa Conference League group stage, the unpaired UEFA Europa League club will be paired with the club in the UEFA Europa Conference League group stage. A ball is drawn at random from pot one. The team drawn is placed in the first available group in alphabetical order from A to H, as indicated by the computer. For example, if the team drawn has all eight options from A to H available, it will be automatically allocated to group A. In a similar way, if the team drawn has only six options available, from C to H, it will be automatically allocated to group C, and so on. It must be noted that the number of options available to a team depends not only on the team's own attributes, for example, winter venue, and those of the teams already drawn, but also on the attributes of the other teams still to be drawn. This is due to the computer calculations needed to anticipate all possible scenarios and to prevent any deadlock situation. This procedure will allocate all teams to the various groups. Then it will be repeated for the teams in pots 2, 3 and 4 in that order. At the end of the draw, a computer will assign the final positions of the teams within their group. These positions will determine the order of the home and away matches, as well as defining which matches are played with an early or late kickoff. The match calendar will be released on Saturday morning at the latest.
So there we have it. That's how it all works. A quick reminder that there are 32 clubs in today's draw. Pot 1 represents the eight top-seeded teams, including Napoli, Bayer Leverkusen, Lazio. There's really so much quality in this competition. It's fantastic. Let's get going with the draw. Get the ball rolling. Over to you, Giorgio. Thank you very much. Uh, not really to me, but uh, <clears throat> to the safe and big hands of uh, Andres, Andres Palop. <clears throat> so, Andres, the stage is all for you. Okay. And you have to tell us how we allocate these clubs to the groups. Okay. Please. Okay. First club. <clears throat> First club in the Europa League draw here in Istanbul to be drawn out by Andres Palop. Olympique Lyonnais. So we start with Olympique Lyonnais. Uh, Olympique Lyonnais obviously can go into the first group, which is Group A. Uh, that uh, is for them. The Andres, you can go ahead and give us the, another team for the next uh, available group. So Olympique Lyonnais is in Group A, the semi-finalists of 2017. Segredo. Monaco. And uh, we, again, we have a club uh, from uh, the French League, AS Monaco, Group B for AS Monaco. Another team, uh, please. Monaco participated in uh, five European semi-finals in the 90s. Napoli. Now we move uh, to Italy with uh, Napoli. <clears throat> For Napoli, Group C is available, and then uh, we allocate Napoli to this group. Uh, we are ready to see the fourth one. For the time being, we have allocated Napoli. Winners in 1989 with the great uh, Diego Armando Maradona. Olympiacos. Olympiacos uh, now for Olympiacos. Uh, Group D is available, so Olympiacos uh, will take the uh, top position in uh, Group uh, D. Five times in the round of 16 for Olympiacos, including the last two seasons. Three teams left to draw. Lazio. Now Lazio. Lazio uh, has allocated to Group E for Lazio. Group E, finalists of 1998. But Lazio has a special relationship with the Europa League. It's the Italian club having played the most matches and won the most matches in this competition the, since the start of Europa League. Braga. Now from to Portugal with the SC Braga. And for Braga, we have Group F. Braga were finalists in an old Portuguese final in, played in 2011. Bayer Leverkusen. For Bayer Leverkusen, it is Group G. Bayer, another former winner of the UEFA Cup back in 1988. <coughs> the final one in the spot. Dinamo. So the last club uh, to be allocated, GNK Dinamo Zagreb. And for Dinamo, we have Group H. So that, uh, that tells us all about pot one and the start of the groups. Thank you, Giorgio. So eight teams down, 24 to go. Let's move on to pot number two, which includes, for example, Leicester City, Paisley Eindhoven, and Eintracht Frankfurt, who won this competition back in 1980. Michael, you Thank continue. You. Thank you, Laura. So I do a big shuffle and then... Marcos, we're ready to start. So, first team of this pot two. Let's see. First matchup. Danger. Rangers FC will be allocated to a Group A, where they will be meeting Olympique Lyonnais. Rangers already played a final in Manchester. We go on. Next team to be drawn out of pot two. PSO Vendover. 
PSV Eindhoven uh, will be allocated to Group B, where they will be meeting and competing against AS Monaco, also PSV, former winner in 1978. Next one. Third team. Leicester City. Leicester City FC, and they will be put into Group C meeting SS Napoli. We go on with the next team to be drawn in this spot. FC Lokomotiv. FC Lokomotiv Moscow will be allocated to Group E, Group E for Lokomotiv Moscow, where they will be meeting another Italian team, SS Lazio. Halfway through, four more to go. Eintracht Frankfurt. Eintracht Frankfurt from Germany will be put into Group D, where they will be meeting the Greek champion Olympiakos FC. Also Eintracht Frankfurt, a former winner of this competition in 1918, but also the first ever German uh, Cup finalist of a European club competition. Let's go on. Three teams left to draw in this yeah. spot, spot number two. We've got five groups already with two teams. Estrella Roja. Yeah. That's <laughs> FC Gewena, Sweet Star or Red Star from Serbia will be put into Group F for Red Star. They will be competing against SC Braga amongst two others. Two more to go. Two more teams at stake. Celt Celtic FC from Scotland, and they are put into a Group G. Finalists of this competition in 2003, where it was also hosted in Sevilla. And now the last one to go. Shouldn't be a surprise. Genk. Genk, KRC Genk, to be allocated in the last available group, uh, Group H, where they will be meeting GNK Dynamo from Croatia. That's it from our side, back to the other table. Yeah, so we're halfway through uh, the draw and we already have some fantastic matches to look forward to. I wow, mean, looking yeah. at these groups, it's difficult to pick a couple, but maybe I'd go for Monaco PSV, Bayer Leverkusen Celtic, Olympia course against uh, Frankfurt. Anyway, so many great matches. Let's continue to complete these groups with pot three, which is coming up next. Uh, this pot includes the likes of uh, Olympic Marseille, Fenerbahce, and West Ham United. Back over to you, gentlemen. Sure, Pedro, we all want to see more. We do. Group. That's why I'm asking now Andresa to uh, deliver <coughs> another team, which uh, will uh, help us uh, see this group taking real shape and we start with this one Olympique Marseille we start uh, with Olympique de Marseille and according to our conditions the first available group for Olympique de Marseille is group E and the group E means that they are joining Lazio and uh, Lokomotiv Moscow for Olympique uh, three times finalists including the last time in 2018 <coughs> Sparta Praha. Sparta Praha. Sparta Praha can go into Group A. And Group A means that uh, they will be facing uh, the opposition of uh, Olympique Lyonnais and uh, Rangers. Sparta Praha, twice quarter finalists of this competition. It's the Czech team which has played the most matches in the Europa League. 
Real Sociedad. And now Real Sociedad, uh, the football from Spain, Group B from Real so for Real Sociedad, uh, where they find uh, Has Monaco and uh, PSV Eindhoven. Real Sociedad uh, they qualified uh, from their group stage uh, in each of their two previous participations, including last season. Spartak Moscow. Now Spartak Moscow. And for Spartak Moscow, we have Group C. In Group C, there are already Napoli and uh, Leicester City. So Spartak is a club which uh, reached uh, three times the semi-finals in the 90s of three different competitions. Fenerbahce. Now Fenerbahce, a club located not far away from where we are today. So Fenerbahce joins Group D together with Olympiakos and Eintracht Frankfurt. So next, ready to see, we have Group F, G and H, still waiting for uh, their third club. Ludo Goretz. And this, the first, is uh, FC, PFC Ludo Goretz, uh, which uh, is allocated to F, Group F for Ludo Goretz, where there is uh, FC Braga and there is uh, FK Cervena Zvezda. Two left. Only Who do we two. have next? Real Betis Balompié. So from Spain, uh, Real Betis, uh, and Real Betis joins Group G, together with Bayer Leverkusen and uh, Celtic FC. Yes, we, we just want to see this name, although we can imagine, <laughs> but uh, it's important to show it so that uh, we can uh, conclude pot three with Group H. West Ham. So West Ham United, uh, the first participation in the group stage, uh, joins uh, Group uh, H and uh, US Ham United, interesting, the 17th team from England uh, participating mm -hmm. in the UEFA Europa League. So there are 17 different teams. So, floor is back to you, Laura. Yes, thank you. That completes pot number three, and three of our four teams in each group are now known, and we can look forward to some fantastic matches, great quality in this competition. Looking at Group G, for example, Bayern of Leverkusen, Celtic, Real Betis, Wow, Leicester City, Napoli, some great matches. Looking yeah, for forward sure. to that. And now we're looking at pot number four, our final pot featuring clubs like Galatasaray, Prönpi and Rapid Wien. Michael. Thank you very much. So, we, go, we are ready. Go ahead. UEFA Europa League. So, first team of this final pot, pot number four. Let's see to which group this team will be allocated. Galatasaray. Galatasaray from Turkey, neighbor from here, will be allocated to Group E. Group E, where they will be joining Lazio, Lokomotiv Moscow, Olympic de Marseille, and of course Galatasaray. They are the first Turkish winner of a club competition in 2000. We can go ahead. Brun. Brun B from Denmark will be allocated to a Group A to complete this group together with Olympic Lyon, Rangers FC and AC Sparta Praha. Also semi-finalist of this competition in 1991. Next one to go, please, Marcus. Next team out from this final pot. Mm -hmm. Stamgra. Stormguards from Austria will be added to a Group B. A group B where they will be joining and competing against Ice Monaco, PSV Eindhoven and Real Sociedad. Also history in this competition where they played already a quarter-final in 1984. Almost halfway through.
Midland. Midland will be joining Group F. Group F for Midland, complementing this group and competing against SC Braga, Revena Svetsta, and Ludo Goretz. So this is halfway through this group. Four more to go. Some big teams still in the pot. Legia Warsaw. Legia Warsaw, domestic champion, will be allocated to a Group C. Well, some nice opponents there with Napoli, Leicester, City, and Spartak. Uh, yeah, uh, Moscow, sorry. That's Group C. Exciting group ahead of us. We can go ahead. Three more teams available in this pot. Uh, Antal. Royal Antwerp FC has been put into a Group D as the first available group, where they will be facing Olympiakos, Eintracht Frankfurt, and Fenerbahce. So the last two ahead of us. Ferenc Varosi TC from Hungary will be put into a Group G. Ooh, and some nice opponents there with Bayern Ulfer Leverkusen, Celtic, and Real Betis Valompier. Last team to be drawn of this draw and, of course, also of this group. To complement. The lineup. Rapid Vienna. Rapid Wien uh, will be put into Group H, the remaining group, Group H for Rapid Wien facing uh, GNK Dynamo, KRC Genk, and West Ham United. That's it from our side. Back to you. Well done, gentlemen. We have now all groups complete, so let's go through the lineup, and there I say a star studded lineup, starting in Group A with Olympique Lyonnais, Rangers, Sparta Praha, and Bronby. In B, it's Monaco, PSV, Real Sociedad, and Sturm Graz. In C, Napoli, Leicester, Spartak Moscow, and Legia Warsaw. And in D, Olympiakos, Eintracht Frankfurt, Fenerbahce, and Royal Antwerp. I will continue with Group E. We have Lazio, Lokomotiv, Moscova, Olympic de Marseille, and Galatasaray, and in Group F, we will find Braga, Red Star from Serbia, Ludo Goretz, and Michiland. And in Group G, Bayern 04 Leverkusen, Celtic, Real Betis, and Feren Varcevi. And in Group H, Dynamo, Genk, West Ham United, and Rapid Wien. There we have it. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. We had a great draw. Looking forward to a great season. And a special thank you to our special guests tonight, helping us out with the draw. Marco Senna, thank you very much. And our final ambassador, Andres Pallop. That's right. And by the way, congratulations as well to the UEFA Europa League Player of the Season, Gerard Moreno, an award we attributed tonight. Now, the UEFA Europa League group stage matches kick off on Thursday on the 16th of September. Best of luck to all the clubs involved. Here's to another exciting season in the UEFA Europa League. From all of us here in Istanbul, it's goodbye. <laughs>